All right, so with most of these places that I was at, the things that shut me down, they don't want to understand it. That doesn't make them bad persons. With uh, Shannon and her boyfriend, they were angry that I exposed the situation there with her being an alcoholic. I didn't do that to say that she was a bad person or to make her look like a terrible excuse for a human being. I did it to show why it is that I was having a panic attack, why it is that I was shut down. See, I'm overwhelmed. And each environment was even more overwhelming because at each environment, whether it was more abusive or less abusive than the last, it was adding to it. It was adding to the waste of resources, the limited resources that I had. I mean, with Graham, when I was uh, at Shannon's, I was freaking out. It's an abusive environment. It doesn't matter that it's not necessarily directed at me. It matters that it's happening. And with me, just like it, Candace's not being able to do the things that I need to do during the day and her assuming what I was doing because she wasn't there to see it. it it's hurtful. I needed that help, and they refused to help because of their assumptions, because of their opinions, opinions based on, well, not finding out from me, not finding out what I was doing, or what was going on, or why I was doing the things that I was doing. Instead of Candace getting pissed off at me for watching YouTube videos, she could have tried to understand why I was watching them. All of these people use the things that I told them about Asperger's in order to hurt me. They knew that doing these things to somebody with Asperger's would hurt them. And that's exactly what they did. They knew that I couldn't defend myself in typing. They went out of their way to take my typing in the worst possible way. And then get angry when I curse them out for it. Fuck you. You still get to see your friends. You still get to see your family. You still get to see your loved ones. You can still work. You still have an income. You still have a roof over your head. You're not pursued by the police for being homeless. You're not prevented an honest day in court. You don't have to break the law to try to force the law to take a look. Miss Peaches went with me on three separate occasions. Well, that's not entirely true. The first occasion was the 29th of December 2017. She went in a different vehicle. We didn't get to talk while she was at the police station. I didn't have anyone in their corner to, or in my corner, in that room while they were going out of their way to overwhelm me. Most people are dishonest, I'm not. So they wanted to treat me like I was dishonest instead of paying attention to my disabilities. But they did pay attention to my disabilities. The officers in Natalie's case in Broomfield called ahead to multiple jurisdictions that I was going to. Officer Michael Beard, his harassment, they set that up. There's no way around that. They literally set that up, otherwise Officer Beard would not have been outside. He wouldn't have had a big old shit-eating grin on his face. While I was at Candace's, that was uh, before they busted Lopez. 
You know, they're waiting on DNA. That's what Danica told me. They were waiting on DNA. The police in Boulder broke the law to try to make it look like I had assaulted them. To try to feign an assault against them. And if you look in that video, they weren't assaulted at any point in time. They claimed that I tried to bite them. My public pretender wouldn't do a damn thing. These people were all afraid. Darren O'Connor, he said that he was afraid. I'd already been through over a year of hell by the point that Darren O'Connor came to take pictures of my wrist and find out what was going on. Over a year of hell over shit that I didn't do. And there were a lot of people that I got rid of. I got rid of them in Virginia for a reason. I got rid of Candace when I was in Virginia for a reason. And Miss Jerry for a reason. And Lana and Amanda for a reason. It's because they were being abusive and they were ganging up on me to be abusive. They are going out of their way to twist it like I was saying things that I wasn't just so that they could justify the things that they were doing, the things that they were saying. I got rid of my dad there as well. When it all comes down to it, all of the people that I got rid of in my life when I was in Virginia, because they were no good for me, I had to trust them, knowing that they had done these things to me repeatedly in the past. Knowing that Lana and Amanda and Miss Jerry had ganged up on me. Knowing that they had repeatedly lied to me and stolen my resources. But they're not willing to admit that because they did wrong. After the abuse that I've endured in my life, it'd be nice if I could just be left alone and not be victimized. But I'm too easy to victimize. I don't have the money for a civil lawyer. They use the term mentally ill loosely to assault the fuck out of me and get away with it. See, when I speak out, they take that stuff down and they're able to take it to court. They're allowed to show up in court. They're not prevented from going to court. They're not having their money taken for going to court, to court, to court, to court. This is what happens when you speak out and nobody is there in your corner. Miss Peach has tried to be, but she's got a family. And she's right about my perspective. There was a lot of shit that I was wrong about. And later on, I told a different story. The reason that I told a different story is because the situation had changed. The information had changed. It wasn't that the things that happened had changed. It was my point of view on what had happened. Based on new information. Like for me, when I yelled at Shannon the first time, that was our third conversation. I screamed at her. I called her a crackhead. I accused her of being on meth. It wasn't until I got there that I realized that she was an alcoholic. So was I lying when I said that she was on meth? No, I was incorrect. And I admitted it. I admitted a lot of things that I was incorrect about. I also admitted the things that I did wrong. Now I'm not trying to put it on her daughter. 
when I say what happened with the cigarette butts. I put all the cigarette butts up on, uh, there's this little thing outside of Shannon's door. And I put all the cigarettes there, all the cigarette butts, and her daughter came out and knocked them all over the ground, and I picked them up a few times because of that. The right thing for me to do would be to put them in a sealed container. However, I took multiple bags of garbage out of that room just in order to go in there. I moved a lot of stuff out of that room. I pulled out bags of alcohol. There was no alcohol in it. It was all empty containers that were stuffed and stashed. I think what happened with Shannon's ex-boyfriend is that she was trying to hide her alcoholism from him. And when I was there, she was trying to tell me that he was the alcoholic. Trying to put it on him because she was ashamed. She was embarrassed. Something that I speak out about often. How people lie because they're embarrassed. Shannon didn't want to admit that she was an alcoholic. Now, instead of acknowledging that the way that she treats her boyfriend being abusive like that shuts me down, instead of acknowledging that, she went for the... Well, you know, that's our relationship and that's not your business. It is my business. If I'm in that environment, it is my business. If Sally Treon's meth-headed house guest is dragging her daughter through the house and kicking her in the face, I'm there. It is my business. <laughs> 